when Jesus says, I'm with you always. Like we know what that means now because we have the gift of the Eucharist. Um, Haggerty has just beautiful lines. And I know we're going to talk about some other sources here of, of just what the tabernacle is now. Like when you have a conversion, you fall in love with Jesus in the Eucharist. You fall, like he said, the gravitational pull of the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. It's just a really beautiful line. The gravitational pull of the tabernacle, you're, you recognize that there's this new sensitivity of heart that you have because you know that Jesus is there and he wants to live in a radically personal relationship with you. And so you're never the same. And your focus, you, your focus becomes Jesus in the Eucharist. You have like a Eucharistic life. You want to be with Jesus. You want to pray. You want to be transformed. And he becomes the center, right? Now, that sounds pretty pious, but that's what, that's what Harry's saying, is that when you have a conversion, you live a Eucharistic life. And the attraction of the Eucharist becomes the center of your life. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. What's up, everybody? Father Innocent here. Hey, I'm Father PT. What was that? You like had a, <laughs> I, I started the countdown and then Father PT like had like a real intense. Well, like you started the countdown. Thing. I don't want to be like. He does what he does sometimes, right? He kind of. I get. Oh, him? Yeah. He yeah. Can, he's controlling. Like fast break. That's it. <laughs> controlling. <laughs> hey, uh, if the, the missionaries can say hello to Jimmy for me, I received his presence. I received. Give him a hug. I'm still alive. Give him a hug on my behalf. Mess with as this, my proxy. Mess with his hair a little bit. Yeah. I didn't say that, Jimmy. Wanna, uh, so I'm, it's nice to have a little personal space. Yeah, totally. Great to have you guys over there. And this hmm. is when you're going to remind people to subscribe. If you, <laughs> that's, not when I, that's not what I was going to do. I was going to do it once in, during the transition but mm. if you'd like to subscribe to the podcast mm. we'd be grateful for that and you can also make a donation at poco poco spiritjuice.com forward slash poco poco um, anything else you want me to do <laughs> i mean he might want you to do the thing when penguin dance <laughs> come on come on <laughs> come on three three million listeners just stopped listening because they're like oh this, they went straight to business oh, everything man. else just i i was just kidding i that's the last thing i heard our camera guy say so i just wrote, <laughs> i have an option i have a couple of options for what to talk about okay i kind of want to do my lay miz thing real quick can i do that yeah i, dude. I need it with father pt here okay that's i'll do it and then we're we going to finish a, strong for conversion. And then last I think we have a question for debate. Mm. So here's my funny, one of my funny things. Mm-hmm. Father Pierre Toussaint speaks Creole. Yes, I do. Which means you basically, you have a good French. Uh, so I took French in accent, high school, having some like Haitian and Creole background. Uh, two different languages, very clear French and Creole. <laughs> but uh, I, I have somewhat of a French accent, I guess. Like you I, could read French. French words in a way that sounds closer. <laughs> yes. That sounds closer to, than other people. Yeah. yeah but not yeah. to say that I have a perfect French. Do you know what Les Mis is? Les, yeah. Les Miserables. I don't know how you actually yeah, yeah. say it. Because mm. when I was in Honduras, all I did, I read a bunch of books because there was nothing else to do. Right. And one of the things I did was read the unabridged version of this book, which is intense. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. If I, <laughs> no, Sorry. it's like, and how asleep. many? It's like 1,200, 2,000. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. But one of the funny things is because I don't really, this is where Father PT and I are very different. I don't like really pay attention to characters or their names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I I pronounced them all like, so Whatever the, the main is. character was Gene Valjean. <laughs> oh the, my gosh. The bad guy was Javert. Oh no. Cosset. Um, and I read the whole the whole book. <laughs> yeah, huge like, thing. Just you like don't that. like speak, you don't think too much about oh, it. Just, no. And I never heard of any of it before. And then maybe one Gene. of our friends was um, Fantine on the on Broadway. <laughs> is that not how you say it? I think it's Fontaine. Oh my gosh. But what I, what I did is I found a, uh, a cliff note. This, this is from cliff notes or something like that where it has the names and this is what me reading it sounded like and I think it's funny. The court exonerates Champ, Champ Matthew in the confusion that ensues. Val Jean has, has time to return to Montreal Surmer and help Fantine. Javert appears visibly excited by the prospect of arresting Val Jean. Val Jean begs Javert to go and retrieve Cosset. From the Thanandiers, but Kof, Jaff, Jaffert only laughs at him. Van Jean, Van, Van Teen, horrified. Oh my gosh. That's pretty funny, right? That's how I read the whole book. <laughs> Van Teen, Jaffert, how do you say it? Javert? Javert. Javert. Hopefully there's not any French listeners right now. Oh, like their ears bro. are bleeding. How do you say Cosset? Cosette. 
<laughs> Girl, the same thing. Girl, Pause it. <laughs> this podcast suddenly we got like super like Franciscan, right? There's yeah. like where there's no nothing proper. Right. What's Fantine? I, well, Fantine? How do you spell F-A-N-T-I-N-E. it? F-A-N-T-I-N-E. F-A-N? T-I-N-E. I thought I was doing that one okay. No. Not on this paper. Yeah. I don't know. Fantine. Champ Matthew. What is it? Champ Matthew. Oh my gosh. Okay, that one's a tough one. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, I can see. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, champ. Yeah. I, like, you hey, put champ. it like, I was like, champ, Matthew. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, I just think that's funny because I wasn't even <laughs> close. That's time. very funny. It's a little bit like, well, I'm not going to say the name, but sometimes you could speak a different language with your uh, native language totally. accent. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And so sometimes uh, you speak Spanish, but like with the Texas <laughs> twang, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And so uh, it's like, oh, yeah, El Señor de con ustedes. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you get the message across, but it's not actually the way it should sound. All right, one last thing. Father Innocent, this is, I don't think, I think this is fresh news to you. Oh, mm. come on. Father Angelus and Brother Seamus <laughs> went to help net and net training. Yes. Are you aware of that? I, I'm aware a couple months ago that happened. Oh uh, no, a month ago that happened. Were you on your retreat? Yes, okay. on my sabbatical. Perfect. So, was, yeah. Yeah. so one of the things that happened is somebody donated four large muffins to Brother Seamus and Father Angelus. So Brother Seamus thought, oh, it'd be great to like, they, they started having something called muffin time. They'd hang out, spend a little time together. Is that what he called it? I think that's what he called it. It sounds a little, oh yeah. But, uh, <laughs> sounds a little nutty, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he thought, it does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He thought, we'll split, the, we'll, we'll split and share like one muffin a day, whatever, for training. And so he says, hey, Father Angelus, like, do you want to split the muffins? And Father Angelus says, sure, I'll take the top half. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take the, everyone who splits the, who's who's gonna split it like that oh Did that, like so what happened uh i think he refused <laughs> i think brother seamus as well as so does brother seamus tell the story yeah he's like the things but, but then he that. like went around telling all the net missionaries like can you believe this what he said and they're like it just a whole war began against father angelus i think the it's top very funny half that's very funny because father angelus is not a selfish guy but that's funny to be like i'll take like i'll, I'll take, take the, the top, top half. but i could see him just thinking like oh yeah split it in half yeah meaning like yeah what vertical horizontal what were my lines <laughs> anyway horizontally yeah, yeah, as opposed yeah, yeah. to vertically right, right, yeah <laughs> oh you call me fantine <laughs> okay uh, oh that's funny it's funny it's it, do you feel i feel like that's something we're saying your brother would do yeah it, yeah, dude, I don't think that. <laughs> he's going to, if you see Father Angelus on the road, shame him for that. He kind of yeah. said he was like joking or no, try to play it no, down, no, but he was no, serious. No. Sweet, dude. Give me the top half. Awesome. Everybody wants the top half. That's the whole thing. I mean, that's thing. like a it's thing. Like, they make muffins was just the top half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They before. don't make just the bottom half. It's like half. a bougie thing. Give me the, think, I, want, right? I just want Maybe the top call half, cake. Bro. Father Angelus What's likes like, nice things. Oh, do you want to share, <laughs> do you want to split this burger? Sure, I'll take like the meat. The meat. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the top bun. Hmm? <laughs> yeah i'll take the meat yeah, yeah thanks dude i'll take the meat fork it over oh, but in sharing this i did learn that some people actually do prefer the bottom half a very rare group of people but interesting so now you know Can I, i'll take that sure i'll you want to split this <laughs> sure, i'll take the top half <laughs> so oh it's fun to make fun of yeah, yeah, yeah he's not here especially when he's not here yeah he's getting back time. tomorrow night so but we'll be done recording so yeah, sorry, bro. You won't see you won't see Father Andrews for, for a long, long time. time. I feel like there's a thing going on here. What like, do you mean? Like a revolving door with him? I mean, with me and Father Andrews. Yeah, you know? like, you I said that last time too. Is like we never get any time off. These guys just get to go live their lives well, and do whatever they want. The hard part is like because now we we have a we have a squad of four and we need three. Mm-hmm. It just mm-hmm. makes like yeah. I get it. I'm on the. I feel sometimes. like I did the heavy lifting for conversion and and mm-hmm. now the desert. Yeah. Like you're just. Oh. Oh, I you just want, came you want the top half day. of a muffin make you feel better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, here we go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks to all our mature listeners for sticking through this with us. Uh, this is... Please note on the on the YouTube, there is a place you can skip the intros. <laughs> just, and it says what it is. It really actually makes me like self-conscious about it. It's like mouse stories. <laughs> <laughs> top half of muffin yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, that makes me feel stupid, but... Uh, I think they're fun to share anyway. Fun for us. So what we're going to talk about is has nothing to do with really anything we've talked about, nor the tone of it. So Father Innocent, what are we going to talk about? All right. So this is episode number... Thanks, Father. Thank you. This is episode number eight and perhaps the kind of the climax of... 
of what it means to have a conversion because we're we're just pulling kind of all the yeah just we're gonna make it super simple and we're gonna we're gonna just pull some layers um just some pull some layers away and we're just going to bring our f- focus back to Jesus in the Eucharist right I heard a couple of weeks ago that I, people stopped me and told me that they really appreciated the um, the episode on confession mm-hmm. and and I think the gift of the sacramental life that that comes alive in us when we have a deep conversion and we again the, the, the going deeper but also last episode we talked about pov- poverty and simplicity when we start clearing the space we can we can really focus on the, the the one thing necessary and that is Jesus right but as we keep pulling the layers back we we realize that that Jesus comes to us and again this is seems so profound and and, and so overly simplistic but but Jesus comes to us in a radically new way when he when he institutes the gift of the priesthood when he institutes the at the last the, the gift of the Eucharist at the last supper right it's a living memorial of his life his presence and, and this is my body this is my blood and and he gives us himself in in just a radically new way in the gift of the Eucharist and so Emmanuel kind of just the gift of Emmanuel God with us just kind of just just blows up right like whoa or when he says, I'm with you always at the end of Matthew's gospel, you're like, like, well, okay, I get that. That's nice. That's a nice meditation. But when Jesus says, I'm with you always, like we know what that means now because we have the gift of the Eucharist. Um, Haggerty has just beautiful lines. And I know we're going to talk about some other sources here of, of just what the tabernacle is now. Like when you have a conversion, you fall in love with Jesus in the Eucharist. You fall, like he said, the gravitational pull of the tabernacle it's just a really beautiful line. The gravitational pull of the tabernacle, you're, you recognize that there's this new sensitivity of heart that you have because you know that Jesus is there and he wants to live in a radically personal relationship with you. And so you're never the same. And your focus, you, your focus becomes Jesus in the Eucharist. You have like a Eucharistic life. You want to be with Jesus. You want to pray. You want to be transformed. And he becomes the center, Right. Now that sounds pretty pious, but that's what that's what Hagrid is saying, is that when you have a conversion, you live a Eucharistic life, and the attraction of the Eucharist becomes the center of your life. And so that's yeah, that's where we're going today, boys. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that as far as like the magnetism of the tabernacle. Is that how you said it? Yeah, I, I did uh, said the gravitational pull. Gravitational pull, I magnet, but I like magnet too. It's, I mean, not kind of okay. Yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. We're for Jean, for. Jean Valjean, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Gene Thanks, Val, Gene. Um, there's, I'm sorry, just to go back to that. <laughs> there's baggage for me as far as, because before my name was Father Pierre Toussaint, it was Alan, A-L-A-I-N. A-L-A-I-N. Yes. And how would you, Mr. Gene Val, Gene, say that? Because I know the answer or because right. I well, don't know the answer? Don't, like if, a, I was a, if I was like a, a I'm it. substitute teacher, right. uh, Elaine, Elaine, <laughs> uh, Elaine Guito. Guito. Yeah. And so that's the, like the emotional baggage I have of. I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. Press, press it into the Eucharist, bro. I, I'm going to have to bring it there. Press in, because, baby. Uh, you can call me Father Mark for the rest of the episode. No. I'll, f- I'll figure something out. Thank you. It's okay. But, um, but yeah, this conversion. Right. And like, once again, the magnetism of the Eucharist. I just remember going through my own personal conversion and the conversion, but just like coming back to that place of, of remembering who I am in the eyes of the Father, right? So, uh, is that Ave Maria? And I. I was going to mass on Sundays, but there was just like a deeper calling to maybe just walking with Jesus in an intentional way towards what God is calling me to do as far as priesthood. Um, I was discovering that. But I just remember just having these moments of, like, I just want to be with him. And I knew mm-hmm. there's a place I can go to where Ave Maria had Adoration Chapel. I can go and I could sit with him and just spend time with him. And then I didn't know how to pray properly at that point. I didn't know, like I was bringing philosophy books in there, like theology books and I, and whatever, I was reading them, but but I just knew there was a, a physical location I could be that I could sit with the one whom I'm, I'm longing for, you know? And so, mm. and then I just, I knew that things would get figured out in the time as far as like, okay, so I like being with people, especially people I love. And so this maybe makes Jesus happy where mm. I'm setting time aside. I, you like being with us? This maybe makes <laughs> Jesus happy. <laughs> I do like being with you guys. Um, but yeah, but maybe this, this makes Jesus happy by just me taking my time out and especially in this moment of of realizing, okay, there's some things that I'm, I'm creating the space to encounter you more. 
And there's this physical place that I could go to sit with you and be with you, right? Because I remain with you always. And this is the Mm -hmm. place that he desires to remain with us in the Eucharist. And we could look, speak, experience, and just fall in love with them in a deeper way, especially in the Eucharist in this physical location or this physical place that Mm -hmm. we have this ability to do that. And so, and to just kind of add my own sort of witness of it on top is, um, I remember, so I graduated from Franciscan University from Steubenville, um, but I'd already had like what I, like my conversion and kind of all in for Jesus like years before that. And one of the natural consequences of that is I remember the desire both to, and just again, so the, 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 the grace of conversion and also a, an understanding and entering into this relationship with, with the Eucharist, like, there was a natural desire to arrive for mass early to prepare. Mm-hmm. And then there was also a natural uh, desire to, after receiving communion, to remain seated and praying even after mass had emptied, ended in the recessional, right? So the song plays and I would kneel down and continue praying, right? And I didn't know, like I went to Franciscan and everyone did that. Like mm. I didn't know this whole thing of like a Thanksgiving right. was like a thing. Mm. For, mm. So you see like where it came from. It wasn't just like a practice, but, like people understood like, oh, when you receive Jesus, it makes sense to spend <clears> some time with him. Uh, and so it was just kind of interesting for me to see like, oh, this was just a natural consequence of it. Um, some I've shared before, I think it was on like Return to Your First Love, probably like the New Year's Eve episode uh, at the end of last year was Sweet. about the, like how there was a season in my life when I was like 22, 23, where New Year's Eve, I would like leave the party at midnight and I would just go and kneel with my awesome. head, you know, right. on the on the the chapel door because that's where the Eucharist was, like the magnetism, the attraction mm. of uh, the gravity of, mm. um, I'm ambassador, mm. the gravity of, of the Eucharist. It just made sense. And I was actually surprised I, the after priestly ordination is because there's a reality that we are around Jesus in the Eucharist a lot. <clears throat> and it, it's not something that necessarily like viscerally or emotionally mm-hmm. uh, affects me these days. Um, but I remember like celebrating mass those first couple of times after being a priest, like we're very emotional. Mm. And I, I, I did the nun run, went to a couple of convents. And basically, like I said, with like, Hey, just so you mm-hmm. know, like, because typically as a priest, you're not supposed to be distracting. As a priest, like you're there as a, like offering mass for everybody. It's not just you and your own relationship with Jesus, right? Um, so, <clears throat> hey, you know, like I know like typically I shouldn't do this, but I'm just going to take a little bit more time like at the elevations and at the mm-hmm. behold the Lamb of God. And just to like That's really beautiful. create the space, like to receive the gift. The nuns are all about it. and. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's five yeah, minutes yeah, later, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was. Later. It was like it was like emotional. And it but was that's like, beautiful. That was, it was I a surprising that. gift. <clears throat> right. Uh, but right, you wouldn't do that in a normal mask because like it yeah. just mm-hmm. you're kind of not supposed to become distracting. Whatever. Um, but I just I think just to to say again and again and again in my own life that this is true, that this is true. That when you you know who Jesus is and you know where he is and how you can receive mm-hmm. him, body, blood, soul, and divinity the attraction to to the Eucharist just makes sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are, yeah, I, yeah, it's awesome. I, I, when you were speaking, when you started to speak after Father PT, I had that image of you. Uh, you I remember the New, Year, New Year's Eve thing, mm-hmm. you leaning your head against chapel. And I was like, I hope he tells that story. Because this is profound, right? Yeah. The, it's, the, it's the pole, it's the mag- magnetic pole that Jesus, um, he's drawing us to himself. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a living, there's a place where God dwells yeah. and he's drawing us to himself. And, and maybe, um, I mean, St. Teresa of Avila talks about this, that it's, it's our desire for Jesus in the Eucharist, but it's also his for us. And Jesus or St. Teresa says that, you know, Jesus allows himself to become so small. And this is my thing. I'm sorry. I say this all the time, but Jesus allows himself to become so small and so poor in, in a piece of bread. What's insignificant. He, he just allows himself to be, to, to be consumed by, to be with us. And he allows him, he, he, he allows himself to be locked in a tabernacle. He, I think Teresa Valla uses the word that prisoner mm-hmm. in a tabernacle because he longs for us to come and be with him, to gaze upon him, right? And brothers, it's, it's, I don't want it to sound pious, but we walk like, oh, we walk by the chapel all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and I think about that. It just, he's there. Right. And, it's, and, and here's, here's what was moving in my heart as I was preparing for this this morning, I was reading like Jesus is the Eucharist is not a thing. It's a person. It's not just, well, I think sometimes ritually mm-hmm. like, okay, we go to mass where you go up for communion and, and it's like, whoa, 
he's, it's not a thing. We're not consumers. It, it's a person. And, and so it's personal, right? And so it's just like, again, and we, we, we know all of our conversions and I'll just tell, again, maybe this part that I've told again is that, you know, it's high school is tough and I struggled with depression in high school. And that, and that was like a dark time. I was a sad kid and, and it was, it was difficult. And I got to be careful. My mom, when I tell this story, my mom's like, Oh, I didn't, you know, mom, it's okay. But I was sad <laughs> and, and, and I was, I felt alone. Right. And again, a lot of the things in, in the church at that point were, were impersonal and there was a distance. And again, we went to Catholic high school and it changed my life at this conversion moment, but I, w- I wasn't connected. Right. So you feel alone, you're disconnected and you, and you just kind of feel like you're just like floating. And I, and I didn't know what to do. Right. And so just to keep this sim- story simple, like I just had this breakdown moment and I went to the bathroom and I, and I looked in the mirror and I, and I, I, I was, I just didn't know who I was. And I broke down crying and, and these deep questions and longings. I'm like, who are you? Like, you're miserable. And, and again, I, I was supposed to have like, I uh, just supposed to have it all together. And like, I make it look good, Father BT, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> but on the outside, it looked, maybe looked fine, but on the inside, it wasn't, right? And, and I just remembered at that moment, looking in the mirror, breaking down, that there was a priest in my life you know, two years earlier that had, that had told me, and it seemed like randomly, he said, you know, in the chapel at the far end of the hallway, Jesus in the Eucharist dwells. Jesus is there. And if you ever feel that you, that you're just lost and you don't know what to do, or you feel lonely, you can just go there. And, and I was like, okay, thanks. I'm freshman. Like I, I got life figured out. Like, you know, I'm a popular kid and all these th- football and all these different things. So I remember that. And I went to the chapel and I knelt before Jesus in the tabernacle I remember, I remember exact spot. I remember the red light <clears throat> that, that says he's present. And brothers, again, it's, it was simple, but I, I, I kind of rode the wave of this priest's faith. I was like, this priest told me that you're here and, and that you're present in the blessed sacrament. And I need you. I need you to come. Like, I need you to show me that you're here. I need, I need, I need to experience you. And brothers, I just knew, and again, just because again, the personal, like it, Jesus became a person for me then in the Eucharist. And for the first time in my life, I didn't feel alone. Right. The Eucharist broke through the darkness and Jesus is like, I am Emmanuel. I am with you. I am with you always. Right. And brothers, I didn't hear voices. I, there was no thunder from the heaven. It, it was just real. And from that moment on, like there is just that gravitational pull that I know and no matter how I feel, no matter how my day is like, no matter if I'm busy or just distracted in holy hour, or whatever, like I just know that he's there and he loves me and he's there for me. And it's just personal. Yeah. And I think a lot of this is coming from that place of, yeah, we struggle with things. There, there is a felt lack of yeah having the answers. Like I'm just in this vulnerable place, right? Conversion. Vulnerability. Yeah. It's tough. Conversion. But just that <clears throat> real reality that he's with you like and that's the most important thing right um salvation history always goes back to that you you love that bro (laughs) i do because it's it's real (laughs) like salvation history is personal history like we can make not just like salvation history is a thing in the past but okay my own personal salvation history but like god never abandoned the people of israel no matter how far they fell um yeah david does things solomon does things like they, they just do things that just aren't good in the eyes of god but he never abandons them like he's always with them and like a real, like a real tangible presence for them is the Ark of the Covenant, right? And even to like when they're in the desert, he gives them manna to feed them, to sustain mm-hmm. them on the journey, the food awesome. for the journey, right? <clears throat> Which we know today is the Eucharist, right? Because I'm with you always. And this is a beautiful line from Deacon Keaton where like I think confronting our vulnerability, confronting these things, um, Deacon Keaton simply says, the Eucharist bids us not to go back to Egypt in slavery, but to remain in the presence capital P, remain reconciled, remain in communion with life itself, and thus enter ever more deeply into the healed life. And like, that's, that's, that's it. You know, like, okay, I'm not going to go back to that place of slavery. That, yeah. that place where like, who am I? Like, what's going on? No, like you have freedom, like in a real way to step into this journey that you're with the Lord, that he's with you, sustaining you. He is with you in a real way. And enter into this healed mm-hmm. life in this place that, okay, 
you don't have the answers, but there's a presence that's real, it's tangible here in the Eucharist. You can look at and say, that's my God, and I know you're with me mm. because I, you've gone to the depths with me, but you'll bring me to the heights because you love me in that real way. And so- mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, the invitation is there and it's moved by your story in particular for that. Like, okay, we can acknowledge these things, but we don't have to stay there because we're not going back to Egypt. We were redeemed in love. And mm. once again, the Eucharist is that sign of Christ's faithful love for us. And permanent presence. Right. Always there. Yeah, right. I mean, there could be a, a crazy Christian persecution and mm -hmm. it'll be hard to find the Eucharist maybe, but he's, it's, with the priesthood, he's always there. Right. A permanent presence. Right. And it's like Padre Pio's line, right? It'd be easier for the world to exist without the sun than it would be without the Eucharist. Something, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. we don't, like, once again, we don't realize, like walking by the chapel, like he's there. Like that's the God of the universe who created right. the stars in the sky. <laughs> right there. Right there. You know, and like, and, and I told people, we actually believe, right. as Catholics, we believe this. Right. He's there. Yeah. And I, I, last, um, I guess, whenever this is airing, whatever, <laughs> within the past month, I had the incredible gift of doing anointing of the sick just three times as a priest. I mean, we, we do the sacraments all the time, but like, mm -hmm. I, we don't, I don't actually get asked mm -hmm. to do anointings often, but all three anointings were right after mass in a particular mass. And so like, I just had this moment that, that I mean, they're getting like the double whammy of the Eucharist and, and mm -hmm. an anointing. But I just oh. said, I just said, hey, listen, before we start, can I just, can we just take a moment of silence just to recognize like the Eucharistic heart of Jesus dwells in you right now. Mm. And he is the healer, mm -hmm. right? And this sacrament anointing with oil, this is, this is real, but we're just gonna, just gonna let Jesus be Jesus right now. He, you just received him like two minutes ago. Right. We actually believe that. Mm -hmm. Jesus the healer now dwells in you and we're just gonna stay there. Right. <laughs> like just, he wants to heal us, mm -hmm. right? And that, anyway, sorry. No. I have a number of items. <laughs> 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 Is that his subtle way of like, yeah. are you guys done? You guys are talking no, no, that's not, that was, okay. that was <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Bro, what are you reaching all the way across to touch me for? If I could reach across, I'd touch no, you right no, too. No, 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 There's a- Right here, right there. You, you're <laughs> stay on that side. <laughs> Bro, what are you reaching across from me for? Well, that was oh, awesome. Man. I'm not- I feel like I made, I kind of gave you a little jab, which I was totally kidding. And so I just needed to like rebuild the bridge. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't, you didn't. You broke it. You broke whatever. It was a bridge. You reached through and destroyed it. Just kidding. I don't care that much. That's it for a different episode. Um. <laughs> There's this idea of, we've been talking about how it, the, the natural consequence of a conversion is a, <clears throat> uh, like an attraction mm -hmm. to the Lord and, and sharing specifically like your story at, at uh, in high school, um, my story as a, what an early twenties young man. But what, what I thought would be, it's true and it's important to notice. It's not just that I wanted to go <laughs> to him, but that he was drawing us. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, uh, you know, it was, you know, it was the, the, the time of beloveds, right? Midnight on New Year's Eve. So I wanted mm. to be with my beloved, but it was, but he- That's cute. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> that father cute. was going to kill the moment. <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> go ahead. I already killed it, but Yeah, please. that was- Gonna make kissy faces. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna make kissy faces. Well, anyway, <laughs> strike, strike two on Father PT. <laughs> strike one, whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry, um, the moment to be with but, the beloved. Yeah, but that, that he, Jesus, as like that I was his beloved as well and he wanted to be with me. And it wasn't just that that Father Innocent was in this this dark place where he needed light, but that that Jesus actually, he, want, he, was, he was drawing you to himself and just this, whatever the magnetism or the gravitational pull of the, of the Eucharist, I think is so, is, is, is the Holy Spirit. And this is oh, what, yeah. this is what the Holy Spirit is doing is, is drawing us to Jesus uh, not just because we need it, but because he desires for us to be close. Mm -hmm. He desires for us to be close as his mm -hmm. beloved, as his sons in our suffering, all that sort of stuff. So it's actually more than us running to him. It's him drawing us to himself. I think it's legit. I think that's real. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, St. John says it. It's not us who loved Christ or God. It's yeah. him who's loved us first. No one comes to the Father unless mm -hmm. the son draws him. draws him, yeah. There you go. Look at you. So make the foghorn <clears throat> noise. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. That's point one. <laughs> point two. Yeah, he, you he, said he, you had multiple points. 
I have something written written down right there. I just can't read what it says. <laughs> That's awesome. That um, is awesome. What I was thinking of sort of the witness of the Eucharist as well, or I guess maybe I'll just go here, right? Um, for me, a, a number of things starting out in my own conversion were somewhat intellectual. It's like, okay, if, if this is, like when Jesus says, unless you, like whoever gives up lands or brothers or sisters or mother, whatever, to follow me will receive a hundredfold. <clears throat> So for me, like, I'm like, okay, if I believe that Jesus is who he says he is, then uh, I can't hold back anything because I think it's too good because he's saying that if you sacrifice it for me, you'll receive a hundredfold. And so it kind of was like this very like, like formulaic, logical, well, okay. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, oh, well, if I believe then this, then I have to be able to trust him with everything because uh, yeah, you know, um, but also there's this part of like, okay, if Jesus is who he says he is, right. And we have this. Um, if Jesus is the source and the summit of all good, if he is, uh, with St. Francis, like if he, if he's our rest, if he's our peace, if he's our shelter, if he is, uh, if he is God, um, then when I, like he has everything I need. Mm. Right. And so I can't be looking, I don't need to, to be looking for love or fulfillment somewhere else. I don't need to be looking for somewhere else for goodness. I don't need to be looking somewhere else for a fullness, for the revelation of my identity, whatever it is like, if I believe that Jesus is who he says he is and that the Eucharist is Jesus, then I need to go to him and that he has everything that I need. Mm. And um, I think, and that's like, that's just like, it's just, it's just logical. Like, hold on, like, hold on. Like, what, what do you, like, what do you need? Like when you're doing like particularly like sin, like, what do you, what are you looking for? And just, can you, can you, cause Jesus has that you know, the fullness of that, the, the, the perfection of that, the maturation of that, like, can we just go to him first? Mm. And um, yeah, that just, it made sense and it continues to make sense and remain true and confirmed in my life. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love it. Um, can you go back to the point, are you, what, what did you, what words did you use right before this about something about like, a, like the Eucharist, learning from the Eucharist? What, I don't know. I don't remember saying lear learning from um, the Eucharist. Well, I was, you just said a couple words and, and it, it was the, it was the point that I was kind of well up in me was that <clears throat> Deacon Keating talks about being like letting Jesus and the Eucharist teach us mm. where you become like a Eucharistic life. You have a Eucharistic life. And so the example of the Eucharist, I don't, I don't know. I, had, I didn't say anything that had to do with that, but. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> I, I was just, I was affirming you. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting on that bandwagon. So Jesus Deacon Keating talks about Jesus in the Eucharist, like tutoring us. And it's, it's he, he likes to use that word, but he, in particularly like, yeah, silence. Like the, the gift of silence in, in the interior life, like Jesus is in the tabernacle mm -hmm. and, and, or the priest says words and Jesus, like the, the God of the universe comes right. to dwell and it, it, he comes in silence. And he waits in silence and you have a Eucharist adoration and it just, he's silent, right? It's, there's no, there's no speaking. There's there, again, the audible voice, it doesn't there because again, he's in the, in this place of intimacy. He, he just wants to love you. He just wants you to receive. There's no words. It's just, it's silence, mm -hmm. right? Again, so Jesus in the Eucharist is teaching us something about the Christian life. There's something about silence mm -hmm. coming into contact with God. Luis Martinez says that the language of the Trinity is silence. That's deep, I realize, but, but something. You, you think we can't handle it? No. <laughs> you, think, you think you're too, you're too no, deep? No, I just, oh, I sometimes like. 30-day retreat. Some, sorry, touching you. Yeah, you are a lot. It's okay. <laughs> you're um, day. Well, I just want to like throw five things out there, but, <laughs> but it's true. Like something happens. Like in the incarnation, the angel comes, right? God comes in silence. So it teaches us about something, but also he comes in poverty, right? What is Jesus teaching us about? about in the Eucharist about poverty. Again, in, insignificant as a like flower in a water, the God of the Eucharist says, I will empty myself completely and I will come and dwell in this little piece of bread. It, it, he schools us in, sil in, in silence and poverty. You're like, whoa, like this is, this is an example that I too need to be, live in this silence. I do need to be emptied. Mm -hmm. So again, it, and it goes well with the Eucharist because once we're emptied and enter into that, then we can receive him in, in the deepest part to us. But I just, li I just like that. It's, he te he's an incredible witness of silence and poverty and he just stays there to, to teach us that. 
Yeah, and I think, and I was just thinking as you're speaking, like, I've never been to the Grand Canyon. Have you guys? Yeah. When I was like little. Um, I didn't really get it. It didn't really uh, do it for me. But he's okay. been to the desert. <laughs> been to the desert, right? Uh, <laughs> didn't really do it for me. <laughs> I just think when you're in front of something majestic, beautiful, awesome, like you're, you can say, whoa, but like words fail. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like just there's something where, okay, I'm just going to be quiet and take this in, you know? I think that's that's something of what's happening before mm-hmm. the Eucharist. If we're able to understand, and we're never able to properly understand, right? Because of our human limited weakness, all these different things. But if we're able to just, you know, I don't know what's going on here, but there's there's something awesome. I'm just going to sit here and mm-hmm. reverence what's happening. Like that's that's beautiful, first of all. And also too, in relationships, like the more you get to know somebody, like you think about the old married couple, right? Or sitting on the front porch, just holding hands, not saying anything. Right. You know, like just just spending time with each other, you know, maybe not that way, but just like, <laughs> it's just enough. <laughs> They're just spending time. They're not talking. Yeah, it's know? just enough. Like I imagine like just two older people doing crossword puzzles next to each other. Mine, I had the front porch sunset. You had crossword yeah. puzzles? Yeah. Like in a, like a warm, you know, comfy chair. And, and so anyway, <laughs> mine's not as romantic. Mine's just more this, but like, once again, they are just together. Yeah. They don't, cause everything's been said that needed to be said. Right. And so in a, in a way, like God has said everything. God, the father has said everything in his mm, son mm. and right. And the son freely gives it back to the father and that we're drawn up in the Holy spirit into that relationship, into the silence as Luis Martinez likes to talk about. Um, Cardinal Lu- Martinez. Lu- Cardinal. Car- Louis Cardinal Martinez. Yeah. He's a ser- servant of God. Mm-hmm. He wrote a book <laughs> called only Jesus. And it just changed my life. Anyway. Okay. No, but like there's this, just affirming the silence aspect where that's the language of God and that's where he wants us to sit. Yeah, yeah, totally. And there's a lot of times just expressions or things that are even too deep for us to understand that are happening, just to be quiet, just to, to reverence that. Mm. And I think sometimes, right, once again, coming from this place of, of having conversion or yeah, just turning back to him, like we don't have to figure certain things out. We could just be before him, present ourselves and say, okay, Lord, help me continue to fall deeper in love with you. And I'll just be quiet and I listen. Love that. Because once again, like he wants to speak tenderly to your heart. Mm. He wants to bring you to this place. He's drawing you forward, right? I just draw on, right? Song of Songs to... Look at you, bro. Now you're getting all romantic. One, four. <laughs> <laughs> draw us, draw me after you. Um, let us make haste, right? And so that's the cry of the beloved or the, of the lover to the beloved. Hey, let's go. Like, just draw me. You're going to drag me. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and let, but let's, let's do it quickly because my heart longs to be with you in this way. And the destination is heaven where we're eternally contemplating the mystery of God, but like we're seeing him as he is. And, and right now we can do that in a veiled way in the Eucharist. And so. I had a, uh, I had a chance. Um, I could, I mentioned it last episode, but I, I went to seek with brother mm-hmm. Seamus. Mm-hmm. First of all, and I, we um, didn't split any muffins. I was getting a muffin top. No. I had someone big. I, I begged some Cheez-Its from the Focus Missionaries. He loves Cheez-Its. He likes Cheez-Its. I didn't Cheez-Its. realize he'd mentioned them on the podcast, but we were, we were staying, it was funny because we were staying with a pastor who's like not into, he's like a very healthy guy. And when he's friends with a listener and she's like, oh, I heard Brother Seamus really likes Cheez-Its. Like, I ain't getting Cheez-Its. <laughs> he got us a lot of other great stuff, but it was funny. We snuck him in. I felt like smuggled in. Smuggled man. through some folk Con- contraband. Yeah. You, look, you look the corner. Okay, bring the cheese. <laughs> Jesus, no. come on. He is funny, actually, because it was a similar thing. They gave us two boxes, like the cheddar and then like extra crispy or extra toasty, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And we switch each day. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're, Sh- you're a cheese fan also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. guys have all these funny experiences with both Seamus, like fraternal. Yeah, maybe shit. it's, do you not? Maybe it's you. Hmm. <laughs> Like, he's a great brother. I never get out of this place. Mm. Sorry. But you just be, came back from 30 day. Our, <laughs> our, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm going oh, to stay at home, dad. <laughs> yeah. Dad, you haven't been here for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Poor brother Kobe dragging the pastas <laughs> everywhere. Kobe, brother Kobe's amazing. He is he, amazing. He Everybody, did so, he did so amazing. But yeah. when I got back, he's like, I'm so glad you're home. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the first day when all of a sudden he had a line of eight people trying to ask him a question. He's like, yeah. deer in the headlights. And, and, then he, and he processed it slow. And so he's like, just like, oh my gosh, like, he was amazing. But it's fine. For our faithful listeners, they've seen um, Brother Seamus be on the podcast. Yeah, totally. Where he blacked out and didn't know what was <laughs> happening. Really? You don't know about that? No. He didn't 
didn't black out, but he was no, so that's what nervous. He, says. he, he, so he nervous. like he has a thing with public speaking sometimes where he just oh with, uh, most times he like blacks out and feels like he's gonna throw up and doesn't oh, know no. what's happening. <laughs> Had that so happen? He, yeah, yeah. So he just like sat there pretty quiet the whole time. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but then we like he because he said beforehand, like I no, I just you know I can't really do it. Like, oh come on. I thought he was just like being like shy or no, whatever. But, he was, right. but it's like a thing. Okay. <laughs> and we talked about it after we talked about it on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. But when we were at uh, in uh, for the Sikh thing for one of the regional Sikhs, the first night we were just together with one campus at like one of the missionaries' houses, and Brother Seamus shared his testimony, mm-hmm. and he totally rocked it. Right, which is the the Brother Seamus I know, super smooth, yeah. funny, articulate, totally. clear. So hopefully we can continue to develop his podcasting skills. But he shared it. He shared a story, the story of his testimony, which was basically like the pinnacle moment. Is he's down. I'll get on a focus mission trip down in, in Nicaragua and they go uh, back to, so they're like going like very kind of off the beaten path, dirt road. And they kind of go into a, like a dark corner where there's tin house, concrete walls, that, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, and they go into the house and as, as brother Seamus, his own words, he says, and I, I saw maybe the poorest woman I've ever seen. And so she's, she's a young lady, probably late teens, early twenties, um, with a variety of disabilities and she is uh so she's she's mute like she's deaf she her her body has like is is deformed and, and her she sits there and like that's her like her like she's not able to move she not able to speak like her she 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 lays there and and the missionaries came and, and they prayed with her and uh at one point the the priest puts his hand in her hand and and he, he and it just I, I his own words like he just he he encountered god and and he as he held his like as he held her hand, um, sort of if you will, like the the lights went on, and and he realized he received his vocation, his desire for his whole life. He he realized that because he'd been searching for God in all these ways, that um, that this was how God came, that God came to him uh, through the poor, and that and that God like God dwells in the poor, and that so he wanted to be with the poor. But also he wanted to be poor because he, mm. he, he experienced that this is where, this is where God mm. in a like, privileged particular way makes his home. And, and I think this is because Father Haggerty, which we haven't been talking about a lot, the, the link between the Eucharist and the poor and the link between the, the suffering Christ are, are very, you know, very key. And that this is, this is very Eucharistic is that in the Eucharist, as Jesus, the teacher, um, teaches us that he, he likes to come to us poor and disguise, and, and, disguise. And, yeah, exactly. And he likes us to come to him poor, mm. right? And and that it's so beautiful to hear again, brother Seamus experienced this years ago, and now you see him now. Like this is this is what he's doing, right? Man. Being poor with the poor, with Jesus who loves to to make his home with the poor. And just to add one more with it is like this is Mother Teresa. There's a lot of Mother Teresa quotes. Um, Father Haggerty has one, but I remember reading through story. No, uh, come be my light. Her her own biography, right? Like Mother Teresa is known for her works or her, her letters. She's known for her work with the poor and, and finding Jesus in the poor. But one of the things that stood out is there was a season of her life where she couldn't sleep because of her desire to receive Jesus in the Eucharist the next day. She'd wake up full of desire and couldn't mm. go back to sleep because of her desire, mm. um, the anticipation of receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's inspiring. It's true. Man, oh man. It's awesome. That's quite a, we're at 42 minutes. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> That's quite a story to end on. I was just gonna, yeah. I was just gonna add some, like an invitation, but I'm like, I'm just, I just want to reverence. Sure, that we can, that's yeah, like we can, a, we can land it, or but your story can. Well, it's just an invitation because I think it's, yeah, that's amazing. Sorry, just taking that in the longing for the Eucharist, and I, I just, we all just want to long more for Him. Um, just, just for an invitation, right? Because it is, it is the Jesus in the Eucharist is an invitation to intimacy and encounter, and sometimes we're afraid because of our own woundedness, our weakness, our brokenness, or sometimes we might not know, okay, so like I stop by the church or spend some time in prayer, like what do I do, right? Refer to the previous 94 episodes of (laughs) Poco Poco. But one thing is for sure is, and Dean Keating talks about it in this article, the healing effects of the Eucharist, Mm -hmm. something like that, is that because Jesus empties himself, well, let let me back up, because Jesus institutes the Eucharist, on the night before the, the the passion, right? The night before, uh, uh, yeah, Holy Thursday, right? He he gives himself in the Eucharist in the priesthood, right? Then he goes directly to the agony in the garden and he, he begins his passion, right? And so 
the Eucharist is the first sign, real concrete sign of sacri- sacrifice and brokenness. I'm going to become so small and become so humble. And I'm just, this, it's, the, it's the beginning. Well, not really, but concretely, maybe the beginning of the pouring out, right? And so Jesus goes through his whole passion. He becomes wounded for us. He becomes emptied in sacrifice for us to become so close to us, right? Why? And Dean Keating says, because he wants us to take our wounds and press them into his, right? To unite ourselves with Jesus crucified. And that's how we're saved, right? He, he comes to, to consume us in our own brokenness and woundedness. And Dean Keating says that's, and, and Haggerty does well, it, it starts in the Eucharist. Every time we go to the Eucharist, like Jesus is there small, wounded, sacrificed. And, it, and it's just like his, his wounded heart is just there. And he's, it's almost like, yeah, he's just poured out in suffering. And so we have a place to take our wounds. We have a place to take our depression, our sadness, our anxiety, all the things we carry around, all of our woundedness. And, and we press them and hide basically in the Eucharist. Jesus, Jesus longs to unite himself, his own suffering with ours. So I think that's just a beautiful thing. The invitation, that's what we bring to him. He's small and poor and humble so we can just come close to him in our own woundedness. Yeah, and it just doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, this is my body given up for you. Like it's for us in a real way. And so like even going back to your example of, yeah, um, just how Eucharistic devotion or the magnetism was was drawn out practically in your heart was just want to spend more time in communion and silence, yeah, you know, or maybe get to mass a little bit earlier, or maybe I could carve out 10 minutes before work and stop at the chapel, the adoration chapel. Like it doesn't have to be complicated, you know, mm-hmm. like he's there for us. And in that poverty, in that place of desire, of wanting to be better or wanting to have these things not be a part of my life in particular sins, just go to him, mm-hmm. just be with him, just waste time with him. And it's not a waste of your time, but just sitting with the one who loves you in silence and just encountering them in there in the Eucharist. And so, yeah, Jesus is the source and summit of all perfections and whatever your stuff is. And you bring it to him first. Yeah. Press it in. Press it in. Press it in so. All right. So we'll, yeah, I think that's it. We just invite you, particularly this is the week before Ash Wednesday begins. Um, I am a Franciscan friar, the renewal and a priest because of Jesus in the Eucharist. Mm. One, bottom line, that's right. it. That's why. Um, other things have played a factor, but that's that's ultimately the reason to be with Jesus, to give people Jesus. And uh, we just, we want you to experience him anew. And and perhaps again, this Lenten season coming up could be a chance to, to do that. Just go for it. Amen. All right, we're going to close with a prayer and then some shout outs and then a story or question that's going to kill the vibe. So if you're <laughs> if you're vibing right now, if you're in it, you're praying hard. <laughs> Turn it off. Yeah, go for it. Me? Yeah. Me? Yeah, 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 please. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Mm-hmm. Lord God, we give you thanks for uh, the total gift of yourself in the Eucharist. We pray in the words of our saint. Holy Father, St. Francis, that we hold back nothing of ourselves for ourselves, but give ourselves completely to you who give yourself completely to us. We pray that if we're hiding in any way, that we stop hiding, but we come to you in in faith and love, but even more so that we invite you deeply into those places that we need to invite you into. We ask just for you to draw us into your love, into your heart, and just to allow us to be with you, to be with you in the Eucharist and be with you in your presence, in your real presence. And we ask this through the incession of Our Lady, our Mother, who is always present to you in her life. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Father, Son, Son Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, I didn't even mention this. Next uh, sweat. Next week, Born of Fire gets lit. Oh, 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 <laughs> I, li- I just made that joke like okay. 12 seconds ago. Hi, Lit family. We hey. miss you. Um, shout out to all of my focus friends, students, particularly those who were just with me uh, a couple of weeks ago. UConn, University of Connecticut. They got some, they got some dudes. Do they? Yeah. Special props to the dudes at UConn. I appreciate it, you guys. UMass. Our dear friend, Zoe, who's at Rhode Island. Brother Seamus and I had a great time with her. Those are my shout outs. Sweet. Do you have any? I don't have any this week. All right. I'm just going to give a shout out to people who have the book, right? I feel like just to make one more plug, Ash Wednesday does start next week. So we'd love to have you. I'm so humbled or we are so humbled to walk with you during Lent and we're going to go for it this Lent. And 
And we just want you to be a part of the journey. So bornofirebook.com, get your book, get your group. And I think it's going to be really anointed and beautiful. So I'm going to share something to like and subscribe or subscribe and rate <laughs> and share and, uh, <laughs> and donate spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. Here's the, there's a lot of like a uh, physical touch here going on. Yeah. Is One there- of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah, been, yeah. You been very physical. One of the things that, that happens because, particularly because of the podcast, listeners uh-huh. sometimes they like want to say hi to me and they're like uncomfortable. It's <laughs> yeah, like, they, oh, you know, like they physical touch, or, yeah. or they make jokes. Here's the thing, right? Couple mm-hmm. of things. First of all, if I, I live with a house of twenty guys, right. I can't be hugging everybody all the time. Mm. I and well, hold you on, hold on. It's my time. <laughs> oh snap! That's not I, nice. If I, if I go for a walk, if I go for a walk and I get by back, I don't need to give you a hug. If I went to the office, that, it does not happen. I'm not going to go hug everybody. That is not happening. That is such an over exaggeration. Also, people greatly underappreciate the quality of a good fist pound or dap. Mm. I'm all about the dap, like mm. a little side <laughs> boom. That's like oh. it's like yeah. Thirdly, this is why you need to both be on here because I think, so you are six, two ish. Yeah. Six, six three. three. <laughs> Father Angel's like six, one and a half, six, one, whatever it is. Everyone here is like over six feet tall. Here's what are you pushing? Thing. Five, Here's, two? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> without the cushions, without the cushions. <laughs> Here's the funny thing is, um, I think what girls like about hugging like big guys I don't, right? And so it's like girls like, oh, I like to like just like disappear and put my head on his on his chest or whatever. Like there's like a thing of being hugged by a big guy. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a, I don't want to, I like when you I'm a little guy like, getting a hug, I don't, don't want to like, like be brought in like. <laughs> you don't want me to no, like muscle no, 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 your head, no, no, right? No, 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 no I think chest. that's, I think that's part of it. I think, I feel like if I was It's like there's like all PTSD peers, from, from you, like your experience of, of physical affection. <laughs> I just feel like if I was with all people my height, it's like a different thing, but there's like a different dynamic. It's like, oh, come on in, bring it in. And I'm like, don't touch you. I mean, we could we could just like okay. So my love language is physical touch. Mine too. You know, and yours isn't. And that's okay. But I'm not actually. I'm not like <laughs> super weird about it. No, you just don't like people touching you or being touched. He did give me a hug when I got back from my third. I don't day. think that's totally true. Just no. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think dap's good. Fist mm-hmm. pounds, dap or fist pound are great. Uh, and it doesn't help that our community is like very appropriately affectionate like right. brothers like and it just like, there's a good a healthy affection that we have as men with, with people I'm for, just not trying to for oh. example i saw you guys this morning i saw you yesterday <laughs> right this is awesome yeah. <clears throat> i walked in hey what's up bang fist yeah. bump i saw you hey bro big hug no i wasn't gonna go that, in for the hug that really no. happened though yeah <laughs> that really happened Paul, hey what's up bro and you was like did you give him a hug? Yeah, I gave him a hug. That yeah, was no. not what my face looked like. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> All right. Oh, Thanks. You can't, can't smile. It's a smile thing. <laughs> I think the thing about being a, little, a littler guy, I think that adds to it. That's a real thing. All right. We're at 51. All oh. right. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, Father Angelus. <laughs> <Yes>. All right. <laughs> I'm done. All Clock right. Out. See you, everybody. God Peace. bless. Have a good week. Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way, hey, hey Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love That life is short That all will be well And I know 